Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. We've got a fun combo today. Conquest from Parabellum Games and Speed Paint 2.0 from the Army Painter. These are fresh new colors, and we're gonna put them to use. We've got a whole pile of plastic models from seven different factions. We've got a giant, and we have some nice resin character models. We'll wrap it all up with an army of undead and a classic speed paint challenge. These are thick, colorful washes that can be used to get a reasonable paint job in a short amount of time. In this video, we'll get some decent looking models with a single coat. We're gonna try out as many of these colors as we can. I'm using a very cheap paintbrush from a company called One Happy Choice. One nice thing about this style of painting is that it's accessible to anyone, and you don't need fancy tools. If you're not familiar, Conquest The Last Argument of Kings is a rank and flank style war game. The minis are on round bases that slot into square movement trays. They can also be used without the trays to play a skirmish game called Conquest First Blood. These are larger minis than you might be used to. The scale is about 38mm for the height of a human. Warhammer is more like 30mm. Old D&D minis are roughly 25mm scale. This larger scale for Conquest makes a regiment of 12 models look more impressive, but they still feel like minis. And the painting process is basically the same. Most of the Conquest models are plastic. The earliest models can be janky, but the newer models are pretty sweet. Most of the characters are cast from resin, and I actually really, really like the resin in this line. I've been buying lots of Conquest models, and I've been falling way behind on actually painting them. I think speed paints are gonna help. Today, we're putting a big dent in the pile. We're gonna paint models from all seven factions. I wanna find some favorite colors, and I wanna find some favorite minis. Full disclosure, I have a friendly relationship with Army Painter and with Parabellum Games. I've said kind and unkind things about each of them. I've made purchases from both of them, and I've received free samples from both of them. I was an alpha tester on these speed paints, and I've even seen them being bottled and packaged at TAP headquarters in Denmark. This is my first experience with the final formula of Speed Paint 2.0, and it's my first time actually painting some Conquest minis. Alright, I'm loading up my brush so that there's a bit of excess to run into the details, but hopefully not so much that it runs into the other color blocks on the model. Within each color block, there should be a decent amount of contrast. There should be tones that work as shadow, mid-tone, and highlight, all from one coat. This is the advantage of this type of paint. The trade-off is that it's hard to fix mistakes, so I'm trying to be as neat and careful as I can. In the long, long ago, there were colored inks. Then, there were colored washes, both acrylic and oil. Next, Games Workshop released contrast paint, with a marketing slogan of one thick coat. Then, a bunch of competitors released products similar to contrast paint, but cheaper and in better bottles. Speed Paint originally came out with 23 colors, and I use them a lot. Some folks did not like the original Speed Paint though, because it could be delicate when you tried to paint with two or more coats. Army Painter decided to tweak their formula to address this. They're also expanding the range. Eventually, there will be a total of 90 colors. I have 50 of them here today. Something else that happened recently is the popularization of an ancient technique known as slap chop, or as the French say, slap chop en grisaille. This is my favorite way to use this type of paint. Here's a variant that I like. Start with a dark primer, in this case I'm using black. Then do a quick zenithal highlight using a spritz of a lighter color from above. For some of these models I used a medium gray and for others, I used a tan color. Next, we do a dry brush to brighten things up and pick out some details. In my case, I'm using a cheap makeup brush. I dab some paint onto the brush, and then I rub the brush on this dry texture palette to properly distribute the paint in the bristles. This texture palette is just a bunch of old bits that I glued down to a baking tray. I'm told that this is better than using a paper towel because the paper towel removes too much moisture. Once the brush is loaded, I dry brush the model. I'm starting with an intermediate color like gray or tan, and then I finish it up with white. The ultimate goal is black in the deepest recesses, white on the highest peaks, and a transition in between. Dry brushing is a useful skill, and I'm getting better at it. 
Artis Opus has some great tutorials that are worth checking out. Okay, this is the undercoat that I did for most of these models. It provides shading, highlighting, and contrast. Now we're going to use the speed paint as a color tint. This is my favorite way to use this kind of paint. I think it's a pretty good balance between speed and quality. Later in the video, we'll do a timed challenge. But for now, I just want to show some nice colors on a variety of models. Some people have found ways to integrate speed paint into their normal methods of painting, either as a way of starting a paint job, or as a glaze in specific areas. For my own hobby, I've become bimodal. At the start of a project, I make a choice. Either I'm gonna paint with normal acrylics, or I'm slap chopping en grossai. Normally, I prefer using standard acrylic paints and standard painting techniques, but slap chop is fast and fun. The way I do it, it really is just one coat of color. By the time I figure out which color goes where, the paint job is pretty much done. No second coats for opacity, no shading, no highlighting. Dry brushing the undercoat is prep work that takes time, but the coloring goes quick. I'm cranking through these models fast. Okay, let's dive into the Conquest factions. As of this recording, the seventh faction of the game is just being released. This is a character from the city-states. It's a human faction, but they're allied with minotaurs and such. It's ancient Greece, plus Greek mythology, plus a little bit of funky technology. If you look close, he's got some mechanical joints going on there. This is a resin model. When I first heard that most of the individual characters in Conquest were resin, I wasn't thrilled. But as it turns out, they're some of the best resin casts that I've ever seen. I've got more city-states models around here, but they're so good that I want to give them more than a simple slap chop. Alright, next up is another human faction, the Hundred Kingdoms. This is traditional medieval fantasy kind of stuff. Knights and men-at-arms and bowmen and all of that. This is one of the original factions in the game, and many of the sculpts are showing their age. This militia kit is only five years old, but Parabellum Plastic has come a long way in the last five years. They changed factories, and they've been continuously improving their process. Here's an archer from 2018, and here's an archer from 2022. The current models are nice, and the future is bright for this line. But you should be aware that some of the oldest models are a little bit sad. The Noble Lord is cast out of resin, and I love it. The quality of the sculpt and the cast are both great. I also appreciate the pose. Drawing the sword is an action pose, but it's also really durable. I'm not going to accidentally break off a flimsy resin sword. It's got two points of contact there, and it looks great. Alright, now is a good time to talk about the metallics. Speed paint has metallics now, and I don't understand them. In the field of mineralogy, one of the defining features of metals is that they're opaque. So, a metallic wash doesn't really make sense in my head. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, I'm saying it's such a strange idea that my brain isn't able to grapple with it. These are sort of like other metallic paints, but they're thinner and a bit translucent. There are three metallics in this box. The steel was a darker color than I'm ever likely to use, but it basically works. The copper was janky. When you put it in a palette, there's a lot of weird components floating around in there. When I put it on a model, it looks okay, but not great. The gold isn't bad. I got some decent use out of it. I don't know if it's going to earn a spot on my painting desk, but it's not bad. For two of these Hundred Kingdom models, I undercoated their armor with a bright silver metallic color from Vallejo and then I brushed on some colorful speed paint. This works well, and it's my favorite way to get a colored metallic effect. Silver undercoat, speed paint on top. It works great. Okay, I've got one more thing to say about the 100 Kingdom minis here. These nine models represent five different units in the game, and they came from a single box. So first off, many of the kits in this line are dual kits. The militia could be built either as spearmen or bowmen. The armored dudes could be built as household guard or as gilded legion. Secondly, Parabellum has been selling sampler boxes that include sprues from multiple kits, and that's awesome. That's really, really cool. This box had plastic sprues from two different kits plus the resin lord. Now this particular kit has been discontinued, 
but Parabellum has newer taster sets for every faction. I bought the current taster box for the Spires. It came with a resin character, four marksman clones, and four models that could be built either as Vanguard clones or Vanguard clone infiltrators. It's a pretty decent sample to be able to paint a few models and get an idea for what the faction is all about. In addition to these taster boxes, Parabellum are selling starter kits for their skirmish game First Blood. This is like a larger version of the same kind of variety box. I'm more of a painter than I am a gamer, and I think it's a fantastic idea to have these sampler boxes. I honestly wish that more companies did it. Okay, what the heck are these Spire guys? Um, they're an ancient civilization that has explored space and now they live in giant termite hives called spires. Their leaders are flesh crafters and they grow their troops in spawning pits. The rank and file are clones with different attributes. The marksman clones have extra arms and the vanguard clones are really muscly. The rest of the line has some cool monsters and stuff. The Spires were the second faction in Conquest, and the models are just as old as the Hundred Kingdoms. But they're so funky and alien that they actually look pretty good. Okay, next faction. The Dwegholm. These are dwarves. They wear heavy armor, and they have big shields. I only painted a couple of these because I'm saving the rest of my collection for some standard acrylic paint one of these days. I'm pretty bad at this lore stuff, but I think these dwarves were enslaved by dragons, but now they're friends with the dragons, or something. I don't know. It's heavy metal dwarves, and they have some fire and dragon motifs mixed in. This big guy is gonna be fun. Next up, the Nords. The Dang Spires did biological experiments on the Nords, which wasn't cool. But now the Nords are super strong vikings, and that is very cool. They fight alongside beasts and giants. The giant, called the uh, Jotunar, is one of the older models in the line. He had a lot of mold lines and one or two annoying gaps, but I think he came together great. The slap chop technique on this larger model actually worked really, really well. I like the forest sprite green that I used for his clothes, and peachy flesh is a very useful skin color. For infantry sized models, I painted some of the bow chosen. The sprue for this kit says 2022, and I think it's a great benchmark for how far the Conquest models have come. All of the original factions are getting some new kits, and if every new kit looks as good as this one, then I think that Conquest is going to have a very bright future. Next up, Orcs, the Wadroon. These are orcs that ride dinosaurs. I've bought a lot of these, and I hope to really give them the attention that they deserve someday. There are tons of color blocks on these models, and they're a good excuse to go nuts. When I'm using speed paint, sometimes I combine color blocks. For this one, I started by making all of the straps and furs and bone in the torso area the same color, and then I came back later to tint some of them with darker colors to differentiate them. These are big beefy models, and they're arguably too big for their 25mm bases. I've glued 2 grams of steel under each base, and that really helps a lot. I've also put magnets into the movement trays, and this is nice for keeping everything organized. Okay, on to the fun part. I have enough experience with speed paint and slap chop now that I'm ready to do a timed challenge. I have 25 models of the Old Dominion that came in the First Blood 2-player starter box. These are like undead Roman legionaries. Or something. Also they have ghosts. The character model for these guys is actually plastic. Conquest is starting to get a few plastic characters, but most of them are still resin. Anyway, I painted five of these individually as test models and to get some close-up shots. I set aside ten ghosts and ten undead legionaries to do a little speed paint challenge. It wasn't too serious of a challenge. I just took the primed minis, I started a giant clock, and I painted the minis. I chose a simple paint scheme. I'm using ochre clay as old nasty gold, moonlight coral for the cloth, and Caribbean ocean for the magical energies of the underworld. Oh, and bony matter for the bones. In theory, this stuff is called speed paint because it speeds things up. They call it a one coat solution. No extra coats for opacity, no going back to add shading and highlighting. 
It definitely feels like models are getting done faster with this technique, so I wanted to have a timed benchmark for it. It took me about 65 minutes to dry brush the Legionnaires, and a bit less than 4 hours to add the colors. It took me 90 minutes to dry brush the ghosts, and about 3 hours to paint them. The paint jobs were simple. I didn't use too many colors, and I chose to make several different color blocks all ochre clay. It turned out fine. The minis are painted and ready for the tabletop. Each squad of 10 minis took less than 5 hours. That's a reasonable batch size for a squad, and that's totally doable on a lazy Sunday. So yeah, it worked out to less than 30 minutes per mini. Good to know! Often my paint jobs with standard acrylics are about 2 or 3 hours per mini. My standard paint jobs normally look better than this, but hey, these old Dominion troops are done and ready to go. Okay, it's time to give my thoughts on Conquest and on Speed Paint 2.0. I've played demo games of Conquest at conventions, and it's fun. It has alternating unit activation, with the twist of each player secretly choosing their activation order at the beginning of the round by stacking a deck of unit cards. The rules are free, and there's a nice army list builder. Parabellum has been doing a fantastic job of communicating with players and supporting local events around the world. They have an active Discord server where the game designers talk directly with players. As for models, the older ones are a bit janky, but they've made massive progress. I showed more of some factions than I did of others in this video, but rest assured, I wasn't hiding the bad models from you, I was hiding the awesome models that I'm gonna be painting in a tryhard fashion at some point in the future. Overall, I feel like Conquest has momentum behind it, and I'm excited. Okay, now let's talk about speed paints. The point of this video was to show speed paint in action on a variety of models. There are lots of ways to use any paint, but on my desk, speed paint is slap chop juice. I use speed paint version 2 in the same way that I use speed paint version 1. These are pretty colors that do a nice job of tinting a black and white undercoat. Here's a rundown of some colors that I like and some that I don't like. The metallics have not earned a spot on my desk. I have other ways that I like to do metal. Satchel Brown is gloopy and weird and dries too fast. I will not give it another chance to betray me. Nuclear Sunrise has little bits in it. None of the other colors have lint in them, so I don't know what's going on with Nuclear Sunrise. And now, some good stuff. I like most of the colors. I'm gonna keep many of these near my desk to use as slap chop juice. In particular, I like the greens and the purples in this set. Shout out to Gilly Doo. Forest Sprite, Moonlight Coral, and Periwinkle Purple. There are lots of useful browns in the line. Bony Matter, Ruddy Brown, Desolate Brown, Brownish Decay, and Noble Skin are all great. They added a wider variety of skin tones, and that's awesome. It's nice to have a bit of diversity. If you want to paint Caucasian skin, Peachy Flesh works really well. It's an unexpected highlight of this line. Unfortunately, I lost half of my bottle of peachy flesh in a tragic accident. These bottles have shaker balls in them. If you hold the bottle upside down, the ball will block the tip, and squeezing harder is not the correct course of action. Well, live and learn. Don't hold the bottle upside down. Now, I hold the dropper bottles at an angle, and it's no longer an issue. I have one more criticism for speed paint that has a solution on the way. Like many lines of paint in this hobby, the names are stupid. Gilly Dew is apparently halfway between the color of a ghillie suit and Mountain Dew. Royal Robes isn't the color that you think it is. Murder Scene, not the color you think it is. Ghoul Green, not the color you think it is. Fire Drake, definitely not the color that you think it is. The hexagons on the labels do help a bit, but not for colorblind folks. Also, some of the color swatches are misleading. Ochre clay is a great color, but it's not tan. Now here's the good news. I gave Army Painter this feedback, and in the next printing of labels, they're adding descriptive subtitles to the names. Gilly Doo is going to have something like bright yellow green printed on the bottle. That kind of descriptive naming is going to be useful for a lot of folks. I'm going to keep pressing paint companies on this. Descriptive names should be standard. I'm also going to keep pressing for them to add pigments to the labels, and maybe someday that'll happen too. I bring this up because these companies are listening. 
I've met the founders of Army Painter and Parabellum Games. These folks are painters, they're gamers, and they want to make good product. Constructive feedback is a powerful thing. Alrighty, we painted a lot of minis here. The paint jobs aren't great, but this was useful for exploring these minis and doing some scheming. Getting models painted is always a good feeling. I've got a playable force of Old Dominion, and I've already used the Noble Lord as my leader in a couple of games of Saga. Oh, and this giant Nord Jotnar is pretty dang sweet. Conquest has wormed its way into my brain, and I'm glad that we're finally diving in. Well, I guess that's about it for this time. Thanks so much for watching.